Fox Body platform was getting rather long in the tooth. It was actually one of the longest running platforms in Ford history. It began in 1979 and would wrap up in 1993. Uh, Ford wanted to send it off with a bang, um, so they had just recently recommissioned their uh, special vehicle team, the SVT team, uh, and tasked them with uh, building uh, the baddest Fox Body Mustang uh, that the factory had ever produced. Um, so they went through the parts bins and uh, developed some new stuff, used some stuff they had on the shelf, and uh, what they came up with was the 1993 Mustang Cobra that you see behind me. Um, they only built 4,993 of them uh, in three different colors, black, teal, and red. Uh, this one is, of course, black. Um, and there are uh, several things that uh, were different about them uh, that, that, that set them apart from you know, your average uh, uh, Mustang GT, like the one behind me here. Um, and uh, we can go ahead and I'll point out uh, some of those differences for you. 1993 Mustang Cobra. What makes the 1993 Mustang Cobra different from your run of the mill 1993 Mustang GT? Well, for comparison's sake, we're gonna compare and contrast to this 1990 Mustang GT that we have sitting right here. First things first, let's go with the obvious, the external mods that you can easily see. Uh, if we look at this 1990 Mustang GT, we see that the grill bar is closed and it has the ever popular uh, blue oval. If we come over to the Cobra, we see that the grill bar is open and it has the special prancing horse emblem inserted. We move over here to the GT, we see that it has the ever popular 5.0 badge on the fender. We come over to the Cobra. We've got the more sinister Cobra badge. Let's go over here to the back of the car. Right off, you can see the wing on the back of the car. This was made specifically for the Cobra. They, of course, been copied and uh, you know entered the aftermarket, and you could you know see them on all sorts of Fox bodies. But uh, this was the first and only year that Ford made it to put on the Cobra. We also see here they have the Cobra badging on the deck lid. Uh, you've got your blue oval here. Over here on the GT, we have the blue oval, but of course, no Cobra badging. You know, take a look at your taillights here. They're your typical GT taillights. If we come back over here to the Cobra, the SVT team uh, went into the parts bins uh, and resurrected a bunch of SVO taillights from the 84 to 86 model year and used them on the Cobras. Uh, as you can see, you have the black, uh, line that runs through the center of the tail light. Um, if we look at the if we look at the uh, rear uh, of the Cobra, we see that the rear uh, roll pan ground effects do not, in fact, uh, cover the exhaust. The exhaust uh, exits like on a uh, LX, uh, whereas on a normal GT, you can see the. Uh, the downturned uh, exhaust tips that, uh, that uh, exit uh, beneath the uh, roll pan. Uh, here's another big one, uh, probably the biggest from the outside. If we look at the 90 GT, we see that, uh, uh, well, it of course uh, was the last year of the uh, turbine style wheel on the GTs. They switched over to the uh, five uh, spoke pony wheel in 91, but if we look over here, uh, we see these uh, special one-off uh, uh, wheels, 17-inch uh, uh, four lug, which were made uh, only for one year, for specifically for the Cobra. They also have, like the wing, uh, been copied and, and entered the aftermarket, but they were, um, they were just for intended, made for and intended for the Cobra. Let's take a look inside the car. This is a 
leather interior that could probably be at home in just about any Mustang GT uh, of the time. Uh, there's nothing really particularly different about it. Uh, this particular car has a power driver's seat, uh, but really the only uh, internal styling cues that set a Cobra apart from uh, a run-of-the-mill GT were uh, the floor mats. Um, these are covered up to per protect them, but uh, they were embroidered with the Cobra emblem. Um, uh, very hard to come by now, uh, or at least original ones. If we take a look inside this 1990 GT, we see that with the exception of the cloth versus leather, that the interiors are uh, exactly the same. There is uh, nothing here that any different than what we saw in the Cobra, again, with the exception of the floor mats, but um, the 1993 Cobra was essentially, and, and, and always will be, a Fox body. So uh, this car here is also a sunroof car um, like the Cobra. Let's take a quick look under the hood to see what really makes a 1993 Cobra a Cobra. As I had mentioned earlier, the SVT team had wanted to send the aging Fox body platform off with a bang. Uh, they put their collective heads together uh, and uh, came up with a plan that uh, roughly approximated what a lot of folks uh, back in the day, uh, including myself, were doing in terms of ordering uh, bolt-on aftermarket parts from the Ford Racing Performance catalog and, and bolting them on the stock uh, 5.0 Mustangs. Um, the uh, SVT team uh, designed a special uh, GT40 style intake specifically for this car. Um, they utilized a set of GT40 heads uh, and a different cam along with some uh, specialized exhaust tuning unique to this car uh, to achieve roughly, on paper anyway, 235 horsepower and uh, about 285 foot-pounds of torque. Um, it was and uh, still is the uh, most potent uh, Fox body uh, that you could have uh, gone to a dealer and purchased. If we go over here to the 1990 GT and we look under this hood, Uh, we see uh, not a whole lot, uh, visually speaking anyway, is different from what we just saw on the Cobra. Obviously the intake, uh, upper intake plenum is different, um, but uh, most of how the car is laid out um, is practically, uh, for all rights and purposes, exactly the same. Um, you'll see, you know, the on a stock 5.0, the valve covers were always gray, as we saw on the uh, Cobra, um, the valve covers were black. Um, but uh, outside of those uh, differences, um, you're not looking at a whole lot of um, a, a visually striking uh, uh, differences, but a whole lot of uh, similarities. I had mentioned earlier the differences between the rear ground effects on a Cobra versus a stock GT. There were also some subtle differences on the fender ground effects, both in front and behind the uh, front and rear wheels. Uh, if we look over here on the 90 GT we have, uh, you could see that they had a uh, opening uh, on both the front uh, and the rear ground effects uh, to help channel uh, air uh, to the rear brakes, um, whereas on the Cobra, they are more streamlined. Um, we don't see those pockets um, that we see on the GT. Um, but speaking of brakes, um, you know, venting the air to brakes is fine, assuming they actually work and stop. <laughs> One of the uh, weak points uh, in the Fox body platform was uh, always the rear brakes, drums. Um, if you're running these things around back in the day, as I was, you uh, know that uh, they like to fade under some hard braking uh, when they got hot. So the SVT team uh, decided to uh, ensure that uh, at least this Fox body platform <laughs> would actually stop. Uh, and, and to that end, they, they installed a set of uh, rear discs on the car, um, which did in fact improve braking. Um, you know, they were a decent sized caliper um, and uh, you know, far better than 
Far better than the drums. There's one thing that is absolutely 100% unique to a 1993 Mustang Cobra. It's the uh, special certificate that came from the SVT team uh, denoting that this car is in fact a Cobra Mustang uh, assembled at the Dearborn plant on uh, April 19th, 1993, number 278 of a build of 4,993. Uh, if you're looking at one of these cars um, that should have one of these certificates, there's a registry uh, also available. You can check the uh, numbers against, but uh, if this certificate is not present, um, and it indeed is not a Cobra. And that's what makes a Cobra a Cobra. There are a few more subtle differences, uh, like ride quality, for example, which we can't really show you. Uh, the SVT team used a set of uh, specially tuned Bilstein shocks on this car in order to achieve a more uh, middle age friendly, if you will, uh, ride quality. Uh, the price point of these cars uh, back in the 90s was uh, decidedly out of the reach of your typical high school student. Uh, so uh, the Ford marketing team uh, was targeting a uh, thicker wallet crowd. But uh, all in all, uh, you know, the car is a prime exact uh, example of uh, American factory muscle at its greatest.